If you're looking to wholesale real estate virtually, this video is for you because I'll be giving you all the steps needed to go in any city of your choice and get started in 15 minutes or less. Let's get into it. Now, the very first thing that you should do whenever you're trying to virtual wholesale is figure out what market you're gonna go in. So of course, that's gonna take market research. You have to spend some time on the computer to figure out what areas would be best to wholesale in. And what I normally do, just say my state, which is North Carolina, I type in North Carolina populations by cities. And when you type that in Google, you will see a website that is labeled as NorthCarolinaDemographics.com. And when you see that, all you gotta do is see what cities have the largest populations and what cities have the lowest populations. And most of the time, of course, I am gonna pick a high population city, but I also pick a secondary market and a third market as well too that has a medium population into a population that is around 50,000. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump into my computer and I'm gonna show you how I do my research on a state to figure out what cities I'm gonna go in. Let's jump into my computer now. All right, so now we're in my computer and as you can see at the top, I typed in North Carolina cities by population and the very first website that you see is North Carolina cities by population and it's North Carolina-demographics.com. So whatever city that you choose, just go up here and change the name and put in demographics.com. So basically you see Charlotte has the highest population. Then you have Raleigh and Greensboro and Durham. Now what I would do, I'm gonna choose the highest populations which would be Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro. Those are the cities that I would choose from. I would either choose from one of three or, or all these top cities, including Durham. Durham and Winston-Salem, those are good options as well too. But if I choose Charlotte or Raleigh as my main market, I'm also gonna go down here and I'm gonna look in this area such as Concord and these areas right here as well too because these will be considered my medium sized markets here. But then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you see that populations of 22,794,000 in these particular areas like Mint Hill and Clayton and Thomasville. Those particular areas, you can pull deals out of these areas, but it may take a little bit more work to actually find cash buyers. Now, the only way that it would actually work is if it's closer to one of the higher population cities, where it's probably 30, 40 minutes outside of that particular city. So if it's a area such as Charlotte and it's 30 to 40 minutes outside of that particular city, you may have a better chance of being able to lock deals up in that particular area and get the property sold. But as you can see, this is pretty much all you have to do once you did your research and figure out what areas that you wanna go in. You go to Google and you type that in, you type in whatever state that you wanna go in, and normally the city-demographic.com will be the first option. Now, if you enjoyed this content so far, please just hit the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell. And YouTube will push this content out to a larger audience and we can continue to grow the channel and help out more people. And also, leave a comment down below letting me know what are your wholesale goals for this year. Now let's get back into the video. Now, after you've done your market research and you identify what market that you wanna go in, the next step is to pull data for that particular market. Now, I pull my data by using a software such as PropStream because PropStream is only $99 a month. Now, it's $97 if you use my link below. And also, you get a seven-day free trial to test out the software without even being charged. And on top of that, you get 10,000 records and you'll be able to run comps in the software as well after you generate a lead you also have access to do that now you have multiple different options whenever it come down to pulling leads you can go to a list broker you can do a go to free route and go up to the courthouse and pull your own data but of course that's going to take time and a list broker may charge you a thousand dollars for ten thousand records so if you're able to get ten thousand records for 97 to 99 dollars a month i think that'll be the best option especially if you just start now and whenever i go into a new market my my favorite list to pull is a vacant list. And of course, I would love to pull pre foreclosure list whenever I go into new markets, but guess what? You gotta spend time to figure out how the pre foreclosure process works in that particular area. 
And after you figure that out, then it possibly will make sense for you to pull that list because it's going to be different in every single area that you go in. Then from there, especially if you have a team, if you have a cold caller, that will definitely not be enough to keep the cold caller busy. So the best thing to do is pull absentee data. If you don't know what absentee data is, it's pretty much a homeowner that does not occupy the property, but they have a tenant in place or it just sits vacant and they may want to sell. Now, it may be lower levels of motivation on that list compared to a vacant or a pre-foreclosure list, but it's definitely a list that can keep your cold caller busy. But if it's just a one-person operation, the list that I just mentioned should work just fine. Now, step three, clean your data. A lot of people don't clean their data. Normally what they do, they go ahead and skip trace it right then and there. They sometimes even skip trace it inside a prop stream. That's not the way to do it. I use a software such as REI SIF, which is also linked below as well, and I export my data out of prop stream and I import it into REI SIF and I separate the incomplete data from the data that is complete. When I say incomplete versus complete data, I'm talking about data that says, let's say you have a property address that's 123 Main Street, that's a complete address. What if you have a home that you know has a number on the front of it, but the address that's on the Excel spreadsheet just says Main Street, that's incomplete. If you skip trace that record, you pretty much just wasting your money because it doesn't have the property number in front of it. So after you separate your clean data from your incomplete data, I export my clean data and then I move on to step four. But the incomplete data, I'll take the time or you can hire a VA to go in and clean the data and it may be thousands of records after you import 20, 30, 40, 50,000 records in the REI SIF. But you gotta remember, it's important to clean that data because a lot of people are not taking the time to do that. And there's definitely some deals in incomplete data. So that's pretty much what I do in step three. Let's get into step four. Now step four, skip trace the clean data. So once I export the clean clean data out of REI SIF, then it's time for me to skip trace the clean data. So I use bat skip tracing to skip trace all my data. That's my first choice when it comes to skip tracing. And you can use whatever you want. You can use REI SIF. You can actually skip trace in prop stream. It's just completely up to you what service you want. I have better hit rates with bat skip tracing and going with the mindset that you're not going to have 100% accuracy. That's pretty much impossible to do because people constantly change their phone numbers. But I noticed bat skip tracing gave me the best skip tracing data. And the next step, which is step five, is I separate the records that came back with phone numbers and the records that didn't come back with phone numbers because the records that didn't come back with phone numbers, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna export it and I'm gonna skip trace it inside a prop stream to see if I can get phone numbers for those particular records. And if I can't get phone numbers from those particular records, those are the leads that you definitely wanna pay attention to because obviously no one is talking to them. So then I import those records into my direct mail service, which is Yellow Letters HQ. And I send those particular records a direct mail piece because like I said, no one is talking to them. And if it gets to the point where I feel like this is a very hot lead then I'll actually go out to the house and knock on the door and speak to the seller directly because I know for a fact a lot of people are not going the extra mile to actually speak to those potential sellers step six is time to make the money now so basically after I have the phone numbers for the records I'm gonna export it out of REI SIF and I'm gonna import it into my marketing softwares. And I use REI Reply to send text messages and send ringless voicemails to the sellers to see if they wanna sell. And I use call tools to reach out to the sellers in a more efficient way instead of hand dialing because it'll allow you to dial up to 10 sellers at one time. I normally dial around three to four whenever I got a new list and I increase it as I recycle the list back through call tools. But step six is very important because that's how you're gonna generate your leads and that's how you're gonna fill your pipeline. So over time, you'll be able to close deals more consistently as time goes on and as you fill up your pipeline with leads. Step seven, convert your prospects to leads. So of course, once we start marketing to the numbers that we have, most of the time gonna be three, four, five phone numbers that you get per record. All those numbers are prospects. When you're reaching out to those potential prospects, 
you're gonna be converting them into sellers. So when I say that, I mean, you're gonna call and say, hey, this is David. I was just wondering, would you be interested in selling your property at 123 Main Street? That qualifying question lets you know if that's gonna be the correct person or not because they're gonna say, either say, yes, I wanna sell, no, I don't wanna sell, you have the wrong number, don't ever contact me again. And that's how you'll be able to convert your prospects to leads just by asking that first question and getting the conversation going. Now, after you get a seller on the phone and they say, yes, I wanna sell, which like I said, that's when the money comes in, it's time to collect information regarding the property condition, when do they wanna sell, the issues that going on within the property, if there's a mortgage on the property, it's a lot of qualifying questions that you have to ask to identify if you can lock this property up right now over the phone or is this person gonna be a follow-up. Most of the time, you're gonna have to put your sellers in the follow-up and 80 to 90% of your deals are gonna come for follow-ups, but you do have the unicorn deals that you can lock up on the phone as soon as you get on the phone with the seller. But let's say that you do have that unicorn deal and you lock the property up. The next thing you have to do is send the AB agreement over to the seller you can use a service such as DocuSign to get it done because like I said, you're gonna be in a virtual market and if you build enough rapport, you're gonna be able to get the seller to sign. And trust me, I've done it before so it's definitely possible. Once you get the seller to sign, you have to send that information over to your title company or attorney. So you have to identify a title company that works with real estate investors or wholesalers. And you have to make sure that the agreement that you use, that they would actually accept. So I definitely recommend you find your title company or attorney office while you're working on generating leads in your business. So when the time comes, you can easily just get the paperwork signed and get it sent over to your real estate attorney or title company. Step nine, you have to get pictures of the property. And I know you're probably like, well, how can I do that if I'm all the way here in North Carolina and the property is in Texas? How can I get this done? Well, it's very simple. You can use boots on the ground. You can hire a photographer off an app such as Thumbtack. That's normally what I do. Or you can JV with another wholesaler that can handle the whole disposition process and y'all just split 50-50. Now, if you're not really sure about the disposition process, I recommend you JV with someone and you see how the process works. And they also wanna bring a buyer to the table, especially if they're an experienced wholesaler. But my main option that I normally use is Thumbtack. I never had any issues with using someone off of Thumbtack because they want you to leave them a positive review so they can bring in more clients to continue to make money and make a living off of what they do. So those are your three options whenever it come down to getting pictures. You can get those pictures in 24 to 48 hours after getting the property under contract. And the better the pictures are, you may have a buyer that say, hey, I'm willing to buy right now based off of the pictures that I'm seeing is very detailed. I'm ready to move forward. Now, most of the time, buyer's not really gonna do that, but it can happen if you have very, very good detailed pictures. Now, I also made a great video on, after you get pictures and everything, how to find cash buyers in local markets and virtual markets as well too. So feel free to check this video out here. Now, step 10. Once you have the pictures, it's time to send the property out to your buyers. I know you're probably like, well, how do we find buyers? You can find buyers inside of PropStream as well too. So you see how valuable PropStream can be. So let's say you left a thousand records. So once you do have a property in a particular area, you can pull a buyer's list for that whole city and blast that property out to the buyer's list. So once you pull that buyer's list, of course, you're gonna skip trace and you should be dialing those buyers one by one to see if they're currently buying. And once you have a certain amount of buyers built up, then you can blast those pictures out using either Wrangler's voicemails or text messages, or you could just call one by one to see if the buyers will be interested in the property. And once you have buyers that are interested, you can schedule an open house to get the buyers in and give them a certain time frame to actually get their bids in. And once they do get their offers in, the best offers that they can give, then you tell them, hey, I need a $2,500 or $5,000 earnest money deposit before we can actually move forward. Then it's very important to get that from your buyers because you don't want buyers that may back out last minute and they know they don't have any consequences. If a buyer has $2,500 to $5,000 tied up in the property, nine times out of 10, they're gonna wanna close because they don't wanna lose $2,500 to $5,000 just because they couldn't close on the property. 
So once you have a buyer that's interested, it's time to get them to sign a BC agreement and you get that agreement sent over to your real estate attorney or title company. And after they identify that the property doesn't have any title issues that will cause you not to be able to close, it's time to set a closing date and you collect your funds for your first virtual wholesale deal. Congratulations. Now, if you have any questions about the process, definitely feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time.